We are about to embark on the Secret Skate Park Tour number three. And the idea behind the Secret Skate Park Tour is to show up with a group of pros to skate parks across North America, unannounced, and just film what happens, film what tricks we get, film what the reactions we get from the locals. We're gonna hit six parks in 10 days, doing one demo along the way, so we're gonna tell people we're going to one stop. And who knows, we might be going to a park near you sometime soon with this tour. But until then, I'm gonna get on this one, go get all the pros together, see what happens. Uh, but I want to let you know that all the sporting activities in town have shut down for the day. Looks like there's some sort of a skateboarding uh, exhibition going on over at Mobash Skate Park. About 10,000 people have gathered, so you might want to get on over there and see what the commotion's all about. We're going to have weather in just
couple thousand for an American thing or something like that. And we're like, damn, you know what I mean? Something else. This is, this is sick, man. Shows the skating is huge. And uh, you never know, like, all these kids could go home and be like, Mom, I want to skateboard. How hard is it for you to, to come and do a demo like this on a day like today with where you are maybe, like, physically? Honestly, I probably have no business being here physically, but I know my spirit is strong and my, my, my vibe and my energy is there, but, you know, when something physically starts pulling on you, then you start having, like, there's a, there's a mental war that goes on sometimes, you know? It's like, can you overcome that? So I'm all about, I'm all about like the moment, you know, if the moment's right, I, I feel like I'm able to turn it on. How was that uh, park demo for you, bro? Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to go in like at six in the morning when nobody's there so I can skate it alone. What's up, man? You haven't been skating? What have you been up to? Yeah. Well, yeah. Been jacket, so I, haven't, I haven't been able to skate too much. It sucks because like the first time I skate in 10 days, I'm going to demo for 10,000 you ready for the secret part of the tour? Yeah, there's nothing secret about this tour. <laughs> Alright, well, we skated at the skate park. We brought our own vert ramp to give this crowd some vert action. We brought some of the best vert skaters in. Sean Postick, Neil Hendricks, Kevin Staub, Dennis McCoy. It's time to go up the ramp. Cool. the most exciting crowd that we've ever had anywhere. I'm not even kidding. Better than any hot jam, better than any demo we've done. These people are, are hyped. I don't want to quit. I don't want to stop skating more. Buzzed after an event like this after today, like you got a little adrenaline um, rush. This one was awesome, man. I mean, I, I there, there was a lot of hype around this demo. Everyone from Missoula was saying it's gonna be big, man. Everyone from Missoula is gonna be there. They, you know, they shut down the little league games and soccer games aren't happening today. And I was like, yeah, sure, right, right. And then we got here and heard the crowd. I was like, they're right. It's, it's that big. There's people as far as you can see across the bridge, all up every hillside against every barricade um, and they were hyped on the skating and that was that was so much fun for us. Pressure for the park, not so much pressure for the vert. Are you ready to get on with the, the secret aspect of I'm kind of, I, I, to be honest, on our last secret tours the demos were always at the end so there was always this build up of, of pressure that you're going to have to perform at the very end and this time I'm glad to get it done now and the rest of the trip is going to be not smooth sailing, but just able to focus on the skating and not worry about the crowds and the autographs and the pictures and, and the timing and the announcing. It was, it's just going to be like pure skating from here on out. This tour is to go to public skate parks in smaller towns and take a crew of pros and just document what happens when we show up, document the riding, the skating, and the crowd reaction. I come on these tours. Guys, man, it's the T-Hawk tour. Like, if I was a kid at home and I was just at my normal skate park and, you know, Tony Hawk, cruised up with all the top skateboarders in the world, yeah, I'd freak out. Which is exactly what these kids are doing, so it's awesome. I told you! I told you! 
Look! I told you! Holy shit! Who is that? Huh? Who is that? That's Tony Hawk! Alright! Yeah! Oh man, where's my phone at? I'm calling my mom. Every time we show up, people start getting on their cell phones and all of a sudden within 20 minutes, there's a crowd. Within an hour, there's a scene. You know, and then by the time we leave, it's like, it's like a concert just happened. We're calling all our friends to let them know that Tony Hawk and Bam are here. This is so cool. Did you get surprised? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. The secret part of the tour lasts for about 15 minutes because the five people that are at the park call five of their buddies, then five of their buddies call five of the other buddies. Next thing you know, there's 300 people at the park in 20 minutes. It's insane. It's fun, you know, it's, it's a fun it's a fun concept. It's, it's less pressure. It's definitely more intimate with the crowd. You know, we don't have to worry about barricading people because we're there skating with them instead of for them. first that no one was going to be showing up because I thought you know it's a secret tour people are at work and maybe there's not that many skaters in town or whatever but I don't know what it is they get off and they all start coming everybody you know parents and just people from the town and then all the skater kids and everybody it's nuts yeah I'm skating right now you will not believe the crew that's here Ryan Shepard's here Tony Hawk, Andy Andy Reynolds. Yeah, they're all right here. Can I get uh, Tony over here? He wants to talk to him on the phone. He won't believe me. Yeah. Yeah. Who's this? Casel? Cable. Cable. Why aren't you at the skate park? Oh, okay. Well, you better get over here soon. There's stuff going down here, it's crazy. Alright. Thank you, man. Cool. My legs are so weak, I can't even skate right now. I'm so so excited about all this. I need to smoke a cigarette. Has anybody got a light, man? Watching these kids do all these tricks, I feel like I just had sex or something. Skateboarding's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. There's less happening at the grassroots level. And the Secret Tour is just a great opportunity to impact the grassroots, you know. Tony really can't do that with announcing that he's coming, because his name is so big and he draws so many people, like we saw in Montana, you know. I mean, 10,000 some people. It's just ridiculous. But get on the road and do this, like, Secret Tour thing, and it just, uh, and it just, sh it just shows us, that, you know, really the importance of what we do and why we're here. Never. I've never seen a pro skater. Oh, good. Dude, is that Mike Valley? Oh, my God. Oh. What do you think about the idea that this guy's just kind of showing up on the scene? Actually, it's, it's, it's better because it's not all uh, to be expected. You just get to sh they show up, you're just shocked, and it's just, it's actually more exciting, actually. So you're sitting at home doing nothing, all of a sudden Tony Hawk's here. This is Montana. Yeah. This doesn't happen in Montana. This is awesome. awesome. Yeah, dude. It's pretty nice. Yeah, this is so sick, the programs here. I mean, look how excited they are. You know, just a group of like 10 skaters show up, you know, who know how to ride these things, and they're just going to learn so much. They're going to be inspired by us, so that's yeah, a good thing. And the fact that a group of pros took the time to come hang out with them, you know what I mean? I think that, that says a lot just for our sport in general. It says that's that's what we're into. You know, these are the roots that we, we grew up in. These are these are the types of scenes that we all we all lived in and we appreciate and we're out there experiencing them. There aren't 
any other sports that you can say professionals show up at your local spot. <laughs> Certainly doesn't happen in ball sports. Whenever we select a group of guys to come on this trip, I try to make it diverse. You know, I know there are certain guys that are good at writing transitions. There are certain guys that are good at writing rails. There are certain guys that are good at writing banks or, or doing transfers from one thing to the other. Everybody on this tour is like a perfect mix. You know, I mean, you got you got Chalmers, you got Mike V, you got Tony, me, like the, the older dudes, I guess. I can't believe I'm saying I'm an older dude, but I am. <laughs> and then you got the little Groms and, uh, and they're just killing it. I think the whole point in, in putting together such a diverse crew is to represent all the facets of skateboarding and to show these kids that it's not just about one type of skating. It's not just about hitting the stairs or, or hitting a handrail or jumping, jumping a hip. It's about doing it all, covering all your bases, and just having fun on everything you skate. Sheckler walks this fine line between sort of superstar pro and Grom. You know what I mean? He's he's grown up skating with the guys that we have here, guys like Figgy, David, Riley, uh, Sean, and, and Taylor. And so when he comes in, he knows that crew. He hangs out with that crew, but he's gotten so far in his skating that he sort of steps it up to another level that those guys are, are looking to. You know what I mean? Like, and and then they take him as an inspiration because. He's around their age, but all of a sudden he's like, oh, let's jump down this thing. And they're like, really? Whoa, I, okay, I guess we could do that, you know? But, but Checkler is the first one to go try it, or the first one to point it out. And that's why he's, he's, so, he's so far in his career already, you know what I mean? He's one of the world's best skaters. He's 16 years old. It's, he's unstoppable. I can look at things now and know whether or not it's too big from just skating in the past. Before, I had no idea. I just went for huge things and, you know, whatever happened, happened. But, you know, now I can, I know my limits. It's not painful if you land on the board. If, uh, if you completely miss the board and land feet on the concrete, then it starts getting really painful. Now, do you get nervous for the other guys? You kind of drag the am jam into some of those things. Is yeah. that stuff out of touch for, for other skaters? Um, it depends on, you know, what people like to skate. Like, I know that Figgy skates big drops, but, you know, he likes to skate the rails, too, so Figgy kills it everywhere, but uh, I'm glad he skated out with me. It was sick. So this is how the new kids use the ball. 
they jump from the deck to the flat transition is just something of the past, you know? It's like, it's played out, I guess, riding up in the wall. Now it's just jumping from the top to the bottom, which is usually what we avoid when we ride transitions. When you ride transition, you go up, you want to come back down the transition. You don't want to just go to flat, but I think, like, evolution has changed the, the bodies of youth, and they're made of titanium. Man, you leave the autograph sign to the pros. All right, you graduate today. You're just a little amateur grump. So go get your tricks because we need some footage. Go. What was different with this tour than previous years? The, the main difference with this tour is that we, we brought this, this group of amateurs with us, and these guys are the next generation. They're, you know, these guys are fired up. They're all really, really good. The fact that they're here with us veteran pros gets us fired up, you know what I mean? It gets us motivated because we're not just relying on the stuff we know we can do. All of a sudden, we have to step it up to, <laughs> you know, even be noticed with this pool of... of uh, I don't want to say adolescent, but young talent. <laughs> I actually think that they're probably more stoked that Riley's on the tour than Tony because they're like their own little posse. <laughs> they all rock the same gear and have the same length hair. <laughs> they just bite each other's styles and stuff. It's so funny to watch. Geography, and you're supposed to be doing homework on the airplanes. I actually don't think we've done any homework this whole trip. Yeah, I know I haven't. I know I haven't either. <laughs> this is so sick. Tony, thanks Tony for making a failure. <laughs> they definitely all feed off each other. They're like a group of prairie dogs, you know? All their heads pop up when something goes down. Oh, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? You do that, you do that, I'll do that. And then all of a sudden, like, they unleash because they're all trying to kind of outdo each other, but but skate together at the same time. Did you see that? Did you see that? better than anyone. <laughs> Dang, I thought we had some up on them. Woo! <laughs> Holy shit. I thought we had something up on them. <laughs> what about four? Heads up? Isn't there a... I just think it was me and not someone said around. Yeah, at least you can get somebody in the back of the head. What's up, man? All the old guys are out there getting tricks at night. You guys seem to be doing what? Where have you guys been? Gambling. <laughs> All the young guys here on this trip. They're into hijinks and someone along the way had taught them to gamble. Let's face it, they did have expendable money. They all got per diem. How many hours you guys play CeeLo tonight? Three hours? I don't know. The, the first night when I took all Reynolds money, it was like, three hours. I think like probably three, four hours. And then he goes back to the ATM and gets more. <laughs> it was cool. I like this size. I did not. Like you can stop whenever you want. I know, I know. I, dude, I came up. You gotta like, eat. You know? I came up a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> and Andrew, come on, I came up a lot. Another oh ten. 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 This is so gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Who wants to go eat? Dude, I, do. I do. I do. I do. I think the younger guys we're with, I think they're they're actually a little bit more wide open as opposed to just being one type of mentality or, or into one type of skating. But I definitely think Andrew Reynolds' skating speaks to these guys. And he's a uh, he's a name that's on their radar, a face that's on their radar. And, uh, I just think he's. Uh, it makes sense that they would gravitate towards him. You know. Why do you guys love the boss so much? The boss is Andrew Reynolds. Just everything about him. Everything style. about the boss. He doesn't say much, but do you think he cares about those kids and, and their skateboarding or their lives or what they're doing on this tour? Yeah, it appears that he does. I mean, he's rapping with them, hanging with them. He seems to uh, genuinely care. Yeah. Yeah. No way! No, Come not, on! I'm not playing this game. No. Tail Yeah, I think so. I think he does. Yeah. He's He really hasn't been hanging out with the adults. He's been chilling with us, and it's really cool, though. It's, I like it a lot, and he he's he's really pumped on all of us, I think. I think, I think it's good. Pretty much everybody, I whether they're my age or like those kids, that's who I'm with all the time, always, as my friends. It's just people that are die-hard street skaters that just want to talk about skating. I just relate to them, so I'm like, that's my crew, you know? <laughs> the thing about Andrew is that he grew up skating everything. Whatever skate parks were around those days, which weren't many, he was skating him, and so he has this sort of tranny ability, and, and he, you know, he's huge, tall, and lanky, but he grew up a runt, exactly like me, and learned to adapt his style, and so he'll, he'll go out there and skip the stuff that's scary for the other guys and do huge tricks on it. I think it's great that he doesn't forget about that. There's a reverence to Andrew these days with kids, you know what I mean? It's like, he shows up and he's like, oh, the, the master, street skater, he's here. The boss. That's it, Andrew's the boss. Thirty a.m. Can I get official time? Dude, I hold on. So tired. We didn't even get a wake-up call. We're all late. Four forty. It's like two forty California time. So I don't know what else to say. That's it. Yeah. Got your hair, hippie. Hey, when was the last time you woke up at four in the morning? A few days ago. Sucks. <laughs> finally. The whack-a-mole game has finally become unplugged. Yeah, man, you know, I mean, I, I essentially been sitting at home all summer, kind of taking the summer off, you know, I, I got no responsibilities right now, no sponsors to, uh, to put in work for. So when I got the call last week, you know, from Tony and the boys to come on this trip, I had nothing to drop. And I just figured, man, I'm there. I'm there for the whole thing.
Chalmers not having a proper sponsor is kind of like the disease of the skateboard industry. These companies, these people that are in positions of power, they really only listen to or subscribe to the cool guy factor. And for whatever reason, Chalmers is missing the mark there. But he's a better skater than 99.9% .9 of the rest of the guys out there. He's more well-rounded than 99.9% .9 of the rest of the guys out there. And he's always been one of my favorite skaters. I've always really, really thought highly of his skating. Does he love skateboarding? Oh yeah, Alex, he, he's always loved skating and, and he, you know, he's, he skates the longest every time we go somewhere. And as soon as he shows up, steps on the skateboard and does something that no one's ever tried before, some transfer from this wall to the other one that no one's even thought of. And then Alex is like, cool, that was fun. All right, you know, and he's still, he's got the tech stuff too, but he is the master of cement transition. Dude, you see? You don't even need a biker to run into another skater. They complained about me for. Rufi, what's up? You set the high mark on the cradle? Oh uh, yeah, this cradle's good actually because you can get into it. Um, you just go real fast. I have the luxury of being able to pedal across the 90 feet of flat to get to it. Six tours, That's all we ever wanted you to do. And you never took the hint. I'm in, dude. I'm in. Finally, got a skateboard. I'm in. Woo! Sucks. Ready, T? This is our feeble attempt at doubles. Here we go. I'm scared.
so far just getting tricks because it's really good vibes like everybody's pumped up the session and just having a good time. Winnipeg Park, that was the first trick. Oh, first try, first roll around that. Oh yeah, it's cold. Well, you know, just when you think you've seen it all, this hybrid street plaza with ramps and things thrown in, this is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Skateboard Wonderland, it's like skate heaven, dude, it's insane. I can't really speak. I mean, it looks be all weird. It's too perfect. There's like too much. I don't even know what to start on first. You know what? I went straight to the bowl, and the bowl is super fun. I don't even know if I'm going to be here. Amazing. Way to go. Congratulations, Winnipeg. You're on the map again. 
cover this place. Thanks, all right? Sick. More than sick. Amazing. More than amazing. It's incredible. It's crazy. I mean, it's like he went on from being a, just a professional skater and then did Viva La Bam and Jackass and all that stuff, and that just turned him into like a whole different type of celebrity, you know? He doesn't even have to skate anymore. He's the man. But yeah, he wants to. So but he's he still good. And people and don't realize how good he is. He's good. He's yeah, good. he yeah. kills it. No, he, people he, were cheering for him when he was pumping the bowl. Yeah. If we pumped the bowl, everyone would say like crickets. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's huge. It's it's nuts. Like I mean, he's a big celebrity, but at the same time, I mean, he's dealing with like a lot of shit, so it's probably tough to concentrate on your board. You know? I don't know. It's, it's it's pretty hard. I mean, just just the mixture of like, you know, Jackass, Viva La Bam, the Tony Hawk game, the Right Guard commercial. Like, I can't go to a gas station. I can't even. I if I walk the block down there and and the first person that saw me, I guarantee they'd be like, "Holy shit, it's Bam!" Even at the skate park, like, I, I was trying to find a safe spot at the Boise Park. Couldn't do it. Couldn't be, be anywhere. I was like, I'll go at the bottom of the bowl. People won't come to the bottom of the bowl. People come to the bottom of the bowl, and they're like, Yeah, man, I know you came to the bottom of the bowl because I see that you're getting sick of doing autographs and stuff, but uh, can you sign this, dude? It's like, if you know that I'm sick of it and I'm hiding in the bowl to stay away from autographs, then why would you come down and ask me to sign something? It's just ridiculous. Bam has transcended skateboarding. People know Bam as a, a TV personality, a movie personality. They know he skates, they know that he, he is a professional skateboarder, but, but some people tend to overlook that for his hijinks. And at the core, Bam loves skateboarding. He loves to be known as a skateboarder. I, I'm not sure how he feels, but I, I would think that somewhere inside of him, something's saying like, I gotta continue to be a pro skater also, you know? I know how it feels, like at some point you're doing all these crazy things, you're traveling the world and you're, and you're doing interviews and you're doing this stuff and all of a sudden it's like, wait a second, I'm not actually skating. All I'm doing is talking about it. 
I think he thought he lost sight of skating, and knowing that he was going to be on this tour was huge for him. He was going to just focus on his skating completely, and he did, you know, and, and I think Bam was really excited to just get back on his skateboard. Finally got to Winnipeg and he got to that really good park. He, he finally found his his skating feet again, and that's what this tour is about. This is, I mean, this tour is is full on. Go ride your skateboard. And I look like this. And what's the best way to cool off? Water. Beach break. <laughs> Body morphing. Time to go surf. It's on.